one game to end it all and send one Mediterranean nation into ecstasy. Um, the game will be played in one of the least Mediterranean locations, namely in Moscow. The Lushniki Stadium it will be 6 o'clock Moscow time on July 15th. This is 5 o'clock in Central Europe and it is uh, 1 o'clock in, uh, no, 11 o'clock at the East Coast in America. Current form, let's start right there. Um, the French had now two, really, uh, three great performances in a row. The form rating increased significantly. And if you look at the form curve, it was um, Australia was so and so, Peru was already a bigger victory. Denmark, you cannot really, uh, I wouldn't count because no one really wanted to play and they wanted to rest players. And then it was solid performances all the way through. Not exciting, but solid. And again, these form curves are not based on their on their um, on-field performance, but rather on my probability model and um, betting odds uh, around the scoreline. So this is against expectations. How well did they perform going into the game um, on a statistical level? So yes, average form for uh, France is 85%. Slightly different story for Croatia, who started out strong in the group phase. Then even the Iceland game, which um, I don't really, I only count half in this form rating again because they were resting players, but they got their win and they won their first th um, three games. Denmark was a draw that was kind of yeah, not unexpected, but you know a draw is always kind of a little bit of a downer for your form. Russia even more so because Croatia was really heavily favored against Russia and England, yes, since they got the win, uh, it actually improved uh, their rating, but still it was technically a draw after 90 minutes and then um, getting the win boosted this draw uh, above the level for Denmark. So uh, Croatia coming in is an average form of 67%. So uh, just judging from performances, France, and I think most will agree, of late, their performances are just uh, slightly bit better than Croatia's. Accolades, of course, we had this now a few times already, but uh, let's rehash it. We have World Cup winners, France in 98, where Croatia also had their best finish in 1982. Uh, France were also runners up in 2006, and as part of Yugoslavia, uh, Croatia finished fourth in 1962. Um, continental, the Euros were won by France in 2000 and 1984 and Croatia was a finalist in the inaugural um, Euro tournament, uh, a tournament where France participated but other nations like Italy and Germany did not. Um, the golden ball went uh, in 2006 to Zinezin Zidane. Uh, it will be interesting to see where the golden ball will go this year. Luka Modric looks like a strong contender but uh, if Mbappé scores, who, who knows? I, but I would say at the moment there could be a golden ball for Croatia here. And both of them had a golden boot. Uh, 1958, Just Fontaine with the all-time total record with 13 goals in six games and Davo Šuka with six goals in seven games for Croatia on their big run. Competitive matches and the since I also include Yugoslavia there, they have a little bit more of a complete list. Um, there are a lot of games between uh, France and Yugoslavia. I, s I only took the 11 since played since 1965, but there are at least six more. The most notable of these was a semi-final at the European Championship in 1960, where Yugoslavia won 5-4 in, in France, and probably even in Paris, um, so and to reach the final. So that is probably the biggest result um, between uh, the two nations, other than the semi-final in '98, where France won 2-1. Uh, let's go. Let's run through the matches. So this was World Cup qualifying 1965, where France eventually qualified. Each a home win, won nothing. Then uh, the qualification playoff um, for Euro 1968, where Yugoslavia ended up as finalists. Um, the France got a home draw in Marseille and then in Belgrade, um, Yugoslavia 
obliterated the French with 5-1. Uh, then they didn't meet until the 80s, where it was uh, the Euro 1984, uh, not 48, 84, in Saint-Étienne, where the French beat in the last group game the Yugoslavs 3-2. And if I remember correctly, uh, during that game, the Yugoslavian coach got a heart attack and died. So it's kind of a sad game, but it was a 3-2. Uh, one of the closer results for the dominating French side at this world, uh, at this Euro tournament. And then they met again um, for qualification uh, for the 86 World Cup with 0-0 in Sarajevo and then a 2-0 win uh, in Paris. Um, World Cup qualifying, Yugoslavia then turned around. So there was a kind of a in the 80s, early to mid 80s, it was French dominance over Yugoslavia. And then it turned around uh, with Yugoslavia qualifying for Italy 1990, um, also due to a 3 2 win at home in Belgrade and a goalless draw in Paris. And then we are, of course, at the uh, Croatia, not Yugoslavia anymore, but Croatia, where um, France beat Croatia 2-1. I already talked about this. It was a very intriguing semi-final. Um, France had a lot of the possession but couldn't break through. And then uh, Croatia, Davo Šuka scored right after halftime. It was very, very quick. And you really thought now the French are in real trouble because France had serious trouble scoring at this World Cup. In the knockout stage, they uh, got a late winner by Laurent Blanc against Paraguay. That was the first golden goal in World Cup history. And then they played a goalless draw against Italy, where also Italy looked more threatening. And so you really thought at this point, uh, who's going to score the goals for France? France has a penchant for um, featuring strikerless squads. And that was one of them. And this year, arg arguably, we can put in there, because the center forward, Giroud, is not really doing much. Uh, scoring wise but then when you thought yeah there's no striker for France <laughs> Lillian Thuram stepped up and scored his only two goals for France the one right just a minute or two after Schuka scored to make it level and then later on again from outside the box he scored the winner and then of course there was a Slaven Bilic Laurent Blanc scuffle where Bilic faked some um, hit to the head and Laurent Blanc got a yellow card that suspended or even red card that suspended him for the final Totally undeserved, um, and yeah, put France in kind of uh, some trouble, seemingly, because Laurent Blanc was definitely one of their inspirational leaders. Then, this game here, the last one between Croatia and France, that was a crazy one. Um, this was a um, group stage game, it was the second one, where France had already beaten England 2-1, uh, and I think Croatia played just a goalless draw against uh, Switzerland. France got an early lead, and then I remember Croatia storming back and uh, turning the game around, having a 2-1 lead. Porcho, I think, was one of the scorers. He was the big name this year because he scored for Monaco a lot, and then France got a late equalizer. Uh, I remember this is a crazy game where uh, suddenly Croatia came out of nowhere, turned the game, 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 game around, and France got really lucky to get the equalizer. Um, yeah. Don't remember actually the goal scorers, but I remember this was a crazy game. Um, and somewhere I have a hope that it will be a similarly crazy game. I do remember that France was dominant first half and then out of nowhere Croatia turned it around. And But um, got an equal, France got a late equalizer. Now the record in the final and third place games. Um, as you see here, I made this uh, superscript three. These are third place games. France has six top four finishes. And very interestingly, the first three were third place games. They won against Germany 6-3 in 58. They lost to Poland 2-3. And then um, they won an overtime against Belgium. Uh, an overtime game in a uh, third place game to me seems the most uh, useless thing ever. Then, on home soil, they beat Brazil in the final 3-0, despite Laurent Blanc being uh, suspended, but, you know, there was the whole Ronaldo drama also going on. And 2006, more drama uh, with Sinezin Zidane's headbutt. And, and unfortunately, this is forgotten, one of the greatest penalties you will ever see. The, uh, the first goal for France, this was a penalty that only a genius can do. 
Then there was also the big uh, header of Zidane uh, that Buffon saved uh, miraculously. And yeah, and then Zidane lost his cool. Uh, this was this final was all Zidane. He just didn't win it. Um, full disclosure, I, I was somewhat neutral, but a little bit more for the Italians because France just had won it. But I loved Zidane as a player and I felt empty when Zidane went off. But it was not like two years ago when Ronaldo got kicked out uh, because it was not really a foul, but you know, uh, it was kind of roughish play and I, I, it changed my allegiance in the final to Portugal from France, which was kind of unusual. Um, it didn't happen in that particular game. Uh, but I felt totally empty. I mean, those last 10 minutes after Zidane got sent off, you... It was just an empty feeling for me. The best player of the tournament and on the pitch uh, did something that no one can describe. And it, I, I, I remember I was, I, I was very happy for Italy to win the penalty shootout. But the elation that I would have normally... No, was not there. Croatia side, yeah, again with as Yugoslavia, and um, they had the third place finish in '62 where they lost to the hosts, and then uh, two one against the Netherlands um, in France was played in Paris. Now here I already have changed it to 100% on my blog because I have the information. So let's write here 100, 100, and 100, 100. France will play in their all blue kit that they used against Belgium. I'm not too happy about that one, but it does make sense and Croatia will play in the checkered jersey with white pants and white socks. Also makes sense. I still think that France could have played with the red socks. Uh, I understand we cannot get the full glorious French look with white pants and red socks. But I think Red Sox would have been nice, but it also confirms that what I've always been saying, that Nike is trying to hide away the red from the French, at least the French jersey. That we get the flag here is already sensational. Uh, that's my one big gripe with Nike jerseys of late, that, uh, of Nike France jerseys, that they don't put any red on there. I have France by my model favored 65%, um, 28% for overtime. Yeah, I think it's realistic, and Croatia 35%. Well, that was my official preview. You already have my thoughts uh, are posted. Let me know what you think about this final, if you can add a little bit piece of history here, uh, how you think about me adding uh, Yugoslav history with Croatia. I just wanted to give a little bit of fuller picture of the whole thing, but I know it's not the cleanest because there were also Serbs, Bosniaks, and Slovenians in there. And from other nations, I mean, Macedonians, Montenegrins, uh, Kosovo, so you name it. Uh, I always say it, for me, one of the saddest things is that this nation broke apart and almost it robbed us of a great soccer team. I understand that maybe it was better for the nations to break apart, but this was the saddest political story of my time that I can remember. Let me know what you think about the thought about this video, uh, your thoughts about the final, who you think will win, uh, whether how happy you're about the matchup, if you can add anything to the uh, overall record that I have uh, posted here. If you liked that video, please like it, give me a thumbs up, and if you want to see more, subscribe to my channel, and I will talk to you soon after the third place playoff. Up until then. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.